any questions on sample space, events, or probability, or uh, what we call the mutually exclusive, anything like uh, these are the basic operations, you should be clear about how to do them. Okay, and now let us move on. So, in axioms of this probability, you just assume this three basic things that probability of the event should be non-negative, probability of the entire sample space should be 1 and uh, there should be if I take mutually exclusive event, num finite number of mutually exclusive event and if I take their probability that should be nothing but probability of this individual event and this can be extended also to uncountably many. Uh, we will come back to that, but for time being let us focus on the finite additivity. This three axioms itself they say a lot of um, other impl they, they imply a lot of other properties. Okay. The first property is going to be, so since I said P of is equals to greater than 0 and P of omega P 1. What do you expect? Can any, let us take another f which is a subset of omega, can f, P of f, what do you expect this to be? in terms of the value, in what value it should be? It has to be expected to be 0 to 1. But I did not assume this, I did not assume this here. But this three assumptions itself imply that this is indeed true and uh, you can work out that. Okay, I will just, uh, so only based on our uh, non-negativity, normalization and finite additivity, these three properties, you can argue that probability of any event is going to be less than or equals to 1. Okay. So, for that maybe just let us quickly go through that. Let us take uh, let us first take any two events. One is uh, B and I have another event A. Here is, is event A is a subset of B, it is right. Now, if this is the case, naturally I expect probability of A to be less than or equals to probability of B, right. This is intuitive, but I did not, in the axiom, I did not assume this. But what we are now going to assume that the three axioms already also imply this. So, how is that? Now, what we can do is this event B, I can write it in two parts. Okay, let me call this the one with horizontal lines So, the one in the vertical lines, right, that portion, that portion can I write it as B minus A. So, this is what this one in the vertical I am going to call it as B minus A. That is I remove all the elements of A from B and whatever remains I am going to denote it as B minus A. So, now B can be written as union of these two things A union B subtract A. Let us call this simply C, that is A union C. So, this portion is what I am calling it as C. So, is A and C mutually exclusive? Yes, right? There is no overlap between them, between. Now, but then from my now, can I say that probability of B is nothing but probability of A plus probability of B minus A? Why is that? The third property, mutually exclusive property that I have applied. And if that is the case, I am done, right? 
I'm I'm claim I'm 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 saying that this I have already proved. Why is that? This quantity here is another event. B minus A is also a subset of omega. Right? Now we know that from the first axiom, this has to be greater than or equals to zero. If this has to be greater than or equals to zero, then it must be the case that P B has to be greater than or equals to P of A. Okay, so fine. Now the axiom said how the probability of each event should look. Now does this using that so I'll, so if you again look into this carefully I can treat probability as a function on my events like I said f is subset all subsets and now p is a function on this which is going to give a value of 0 1 between them. So probability is actually function on the events for every possible event it is assigning a value in the value in the interval 0 1. But now if you have events you may take union of events let us say if you have two events and you have union of events E union F and you want to see that how this probability of the union is related to the probability of the individual events E and F. Okay? So, what we are trying to do here is we have one event and another event and let us call this as uh, left as A and this as B and now intersection is the entire thing. Now probability of E union F 1 so what when, when you want to compute probability of E union F what you are going to do is okay you want to take this much and also the likelihood of this much. So when you did this you have double counted this region here. So in this naturally gives me intuition that the union of when I take probability of the union of this it should be equals to probability of E probability of F minus this portion which I double counted. Okay, This is the relation and in fact this relation is actually implied by our three axioms. It is not that I am making this uh, heuristic argument here like uh, the probability of E union F is equals to this intuitively it should be like this but actually this is what our three axioms also say and uh, these are the steps based on which we can use uh, axioms and find it. Okay, I will not go into the details but uh, yeah, just using these axioms 1, 2, 3 you will be able to derive this and uh, you can extend this to more than two subsets when you have let us say three subsets let us say when we have this uh, three subsets and they can be arbitrary there can be overlap in any way I mean this the three circles they may not overlap at all or maybe only two overlap and they and the third may not, not overlap with the other two any possibility is there but let us consider this a case where all of them are overlapping with each other where uh, this is the common region among all. You can again uh, verify that this probability of this intersect union of these three can be written as probability of these three each of the circles. From that you are going to take off that is common between A and F and that is common between E and G and that is common between F and G. But when you are taking out, you would have taken common between EFG one extra time. So you need to bring that back 
and uh, you will get this relation. And again, this is actually implied by our three axioms. Like uh, to prove this, you will you will first prove this property and then extend it to the three subset case. Okay. Now I was talking about finite additivity, right? Why we need to worry about the finite additivity case? Like uh, when I talked about these three axioms, the last axiom I restricted to finite additivity. But uh, in practice, I need to extend this to include countable uh, events also. And now to look into that, let us see what we want to do is, yeah, let us first see that where I may need a countable additivity. Let us take omega, my sample space where omega is any possible integer 1, 2, 3 like that and I am assigning the probability that ith number happening is 1 upon 2 to the power i and this is true for all i belongs to omega. Now I am interested in finding what is the probability that even number happens. So notice that here I have given you probabilities of each of the outcomes. Let us see what I am saying is P of i is equals to 1 upon 2i for i 1, 2, 3 like this. Now what I am asking is I am interested in event E which is even numbers which is nothing but 2, 4, 6 like this. Now I want to find the probability of E. How I will find probability of E? Probability of E can be thought as probability of 2 happening, 4 happening, 6 happening, but event 2 happening and 4 happening, if I am going to treat them as separately, event 2 happening and event 4 happening, are they mutually exclusive? They are, right? Then I can treat each of this, break this event as mutually exclusive event. And then I can use those probabilities to add up to get this. But now, how many times I need to add? Let us go back to this. So, first of all, whenever I say something is a probability, you need to verify that like yeah, uh, that axioms, at least it follows the three axioms. The axioms are saying that it should be for every i, it should be greater than or equal to 0, which is absolutely obvious here. And if I am going to take P of omega, so the second axiom said this should be equal to 1. And is it 1 in this case? right like uh, omega is nothing but 1 2 3 4 all the way up to infinity right you just add all these probabilities you will get one here and now i am interested in this event and this event could be thought of two four i can write it as union of events let me write it as event 1 uh, let me write it, it how to write event I am going to write it as event 1 is 2 event 2 is 4 like this I will write okay now E is nothing but union of these events And now I know that EIs are mutually exclusive. So EIs are mutually exclusive. Now let us say if mutually exclusive and then what I need is probability of E, I know that 
when if this union is over finite not a finite union this is a countably many terms are there so if i have to do that i need to do this i need to have to do this or like p of e is nothing but p of union of ei and if this p of this has to be equals to this there i need to add in countably many so i need to allow myself flexibility not just add finite mutually exclusive unit even add countably many mutually exclusive event and that is where i need to extend my x third axiom and now we are going to say that if you have a sequence of a mutual events e1 e1 e2 like this then they are all defined on the same span sample space omega then probability of the union of those mutually exclusive events is nothing but sum of all of them so that is nothing but summation of p of i so this is what this is how we are extending the finite additivity of the mutually exclusive event to the countably many case but now the question is this clear to all of you but now finite countable finite additivity and uncountable additivity is fine but what about the uncountable case 